Hi there, this is The Green Age, and today we are at episode 29. Hi there, James. Hi, Nick. How are you? Not too bad. Just a quick correction Go already. On. What? It's The Green Room, not The Green Age. A mistake. What's the difference? Well, I suppose, uh, yeah, The Green Age is the website, and The Green Room is, is here. What we had a record month with The Green Age website this month. Yes, In the sorry, month of November. So shout out to all of the followers, listeners, people out there who are reading, watching... Listening. So well over 300,000 people. Yes, a record, an absolute which, record. Uh, so, uh, which is terrific. It's good. It's Obviously, good. what we say is important. Absolutely. Well, it might not be important, but it is popular. Yes. Uh, so that's great. Anyway, so this is The Green Room. So this is our podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you say, we're on episode 29. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, go on, t- tell me. Go on. So we thought, things. yeah, we thought we'd go a little bit political today. Not in not go political, but talk about you know the, the relevant topics because you know we do have an election coming up. Are you but excited about the election? Not really. No, nor me. Nor I me. Just can't wait for it to be over um, and enjoy Christmas. Exactly. That's what most people want to do. Yes, quite. Instead quite. of politicising. But anyway, the reason um, the election is relevant to us um, because there are several policy areas that I think are key to to energy, uh, the environment and kind of overall sustainability. So what we thought today is, since the parties have gone and launched their manifestos, uh, important to say uh, we covered Labour in quite a lot of detail, so today we'll, we'll skip them and compare them to all the other parties. Um, since the system of manifestos have come out, uh, they... <laughs> that's like just a manifesto, isn't it? It's, all, it's, you know, after the election, it all becomes a blur, doesn't it? Yes. And ends yes. up on a pile of recycled stuff. Well, hopefully they'll recycle it um, and not just burn it and throw it away. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'll, I'll stop uh, muttering on and ask you very importantly first before we get into it. Yes. How can people find about this podcast? So the podcast, uh, you can go to Apple, Apple Podcasts, I think it's called. You can go on to um, Spotify, you can go on to Stitcher, you can go on to Podbean, which is where we're hosted. Um, you and that's that's if you want to listen to us, or you yeah. can go to our website, which is the Green Age website. And uh, at the top there, there's a little button that says podcast, and you click on, and it gives you all these different options. However, you devour your podcasts, we will be there. Mm-hmm. If you'd like to watch us, which I get, um, you uh, need to go onto YouTube, and if you type in the Green Age or the Green Room, um, we will hopefully appear. Uh, and and you can and you can sort of yeah watch us and some, listen to us. Some nice subscriber figures coming through, so yeah, very much appreciate. Uh, and we're getting good questions now, yeah. which is exciting. Um, which we you know, as, as I guess as your subscriber we, uh, subscriber base begins to rise, you do get more questions. So this one we're going to do sort of the politics around the election and all this sort of stuff and, and you know the environment but we are going to go back to the questions and back to energy saving in the house and stuff and focus on that yeah. in the coming weeks I, I thought um i thought since the um the, the kind of climate climate emergency protests the the parties really you know took a listen to it and you know they spent a little bit more I think on their manifestos than, than it would in, in previous elections. I'd say is that so. What we found? Yeah, I think so. I think the um, I think what we found here is the two main parties. And Labour are always happy to spend and do promise to spend, but I think the Conservatives have jumped on that bandwagon as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this one, for the first time, they are really you know they're throwing money at the issue, uh, which is quite an interesting start. And I think it's a bit of a change. I remember when we started the Green Age. Um, and it was the coalition, you know, the Lib Dem yeah. uh, Conservative coalition. Uh, we had the Green Deal came in, and you know, they, this was going to be the energy revolution, and it, in, it never really materialised. Um, but now they've, you know, they are literally looking at throwing some money. Do, should we talk about the Conservatives? What, what their offer is first, mm-hmm. and then briefly talk through it? I think it's probably the easiest way. Do you want so, to give the headline? Yeah. So uh, I, I think with with the other the other major parties, it's. Uh, they are very much focused on the home energy efficiency front. So the Conservatives want to put in £9.2 billion, pounds, which I guess is over the over the Parliament rather than on, a, on an annual basis, yeah. uh, towards energy efficiency and, and um, heat-saving measures. And insulation, which is important, right? Because yes. we've always said, you know, you should 
It's all about thermal envelope. That's what we like. We to always talk about insulation. We like we like to talk about we that like first. That's that's exciting rather than looking at the heating side of it. So that's good. So that's a, which which which, uh, which I'd say is is a, a little bit of a retraction because remember we, we we mentioned this a few episodes ago and we were just a bit baffled why. Oh, it's made to electric. Oh God. Yeah, yeah. and, and the whole thing about the the heating and you know how they were going to focus on heating over the next decade and all that stuff. And we just thought, well, the elephant in the room is surely you cut demand first before you kind of get onto those, you know, energy energy efficient heating measures. I did, but just interestingly, so so this is the Conservatives, and as you said, they're from nine point two billion pounds they're going to spend over the over the lifetime of the um, Parliament. Now we had a look, so the Lib Dems, and I know I'm jumping ahead here, but they promised to insulate all homes by 2030. Mm -hmm. We did a brief costing on how much that would cost just for solid wall properties, of which there's approximately 8 million out of the 25 million homes in the UK. And we came to a figure of 54 billion pounds just to do that. So while the Frightening Conservatives, it, yeah. it's a big number, but while the Conservatives are going to throw money at the issue, mm. you know, it's not going, it's going to cover, say, a fifth of solid wall homes. Or I know there are cheaper insulation ideas out there and there are mm -hmm. cheaper insulation mechanisms, you know, loft insulation, cavity wall insulation, these kinds of things. But it's not really going to scratch the surface, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, and especially when you start looking, you know, in within this 9.2 billion, they're looking at schools and hospitals as well. These are big commercial properties, and so the cost is obviously going to be a hell of a lot higher for something like that than a two-bed, a three-bed house. So, so in, in essence, what you're saying is, you know, it might be say two-thirds commercial, public sector type thing. Yeah. And one third, the the rest. Which, which I kind of, you know, it's I, th I think it's going to be underwhelming. Yeah. But okay. anyway, so okay. that's the first one. So, so then the next one talks about the energy generation. So the the generation. Yeah. Um, how, you know, how do you generate electricity? Talking mm -hmm. about the electricity mix. So they have said they want 40 gigawatts. Yeah. So you remember how I yeah. pronounced it? No, right? no, so gigawatts. I haven't done really, my that's uh, really good. Back to the Future thing. No, that's good. So uh, 40 gigawatts of offshore wind mm -hmm. capacity by 2030. Yeah. So um, it was interesting. I was up in um, the north northeast coast, and you see them everywhere these days. So not so well, up, they, in, they, up in Hartlepool I think, on, on the weekend. And I think it's one of the things the UK can be really proud of. I think we are becoming world leaders in mm -hmm. offshore wind, and I think this kind of investment is really good because mm -hmm. the, the more we can hone our skills, you know, we can export these. And listen, we can be proud of it, as you said. You know, yeah. world world leaders. It's um, I think it'd be a fantastic achievement. So uh, well, it's really good. And the more that we do, obviously, so the price of off off wind, um, off offshore wind, wind, um, off wind. even even. 18 months ago was probably double, you know, what it was for, for all the other um, electricity ge generating measures. And it's, uh, it's important to say, though, that the Conservatives, you know, while while they're moving and looking towards offshore wind, which is great, they are very much back in nuclear, so Hinkley C. Um, mm. And I think that's important as well. And I think we might come under a bit of fire from that from people watching and listening. But, you know, while the move to renewables is really important, we do need base load power because of the intermittency mm -hmm. of the renewables. And hence why I think it goes on to the next one, because they want to they want to spend another eight hundred million pounds on carbon capture storage technologies, which yeah. I assume is what you're sort of alluding to there, because what's carbon capture storage is presumably clean coal or clean gas, I suppose. Yeah, or uh, yeah, basically. So if you if you burn gas and make carbon dioxide, you're capturing that at source. Um, and so it's not escaping into the atmosphere, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so there, I mean, that is to do with base load, and obviously yeah. we need base load power somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Because unfortunately we don't live in LA where it's, you know, lots of sun, so we can power our homes on solar. Um, it's not windy all the time. So we, we need to have base load power that we can turn on and off as we need it, yeah. which I think is really important. And then another another half a billion towards the energy intensive industries, which um, I don't know actually. Steel. Much, well, but that most kind of stuff thing. is in China now, isn't it? We've got a little. Yeah, bit it is. There. Yeah, yeah. But they, you know, we we shall see. Because if the Conservatives were to get in, they're talking about uh, promoting homegrown technologies, aren't they? And uh, homegrown industries over competitors, which I'm not even sure that's allowed. However, um, if that was the case, then obviously they can try. And make those less energy intensive, which seems a very sensible idea. And then finally, just to say, um, 
because obviously pollution, plastic pollution has been has been a key thing over the last 12 months. They want to invest money so we actually recycle more of that plastic waste here rather than previously, you know, just export it to a, you know, a, a, a less developed country. Yeah, and I, th I think that's the issue, you know, if, if people are, you're paying for recycling and you assume that your stuff is being recycled, it's not just being passed on to another country. Um, it's terrible. Yeah, it is. It's horrendous. It's horrendous and really surprising. And I think mm. a lot of people find it surprising. You know, they assume that if you're taking something to a recycling place on a weekend, you know, you drive down and take all your bits and pieces there to recycle, they will be recycled rather than turn up in some river. Yeah. Um, I, I saw there was some uh, um, article I was reading about a whale that was caught. Oh yeah, there was there was, was, was a ton of it was a ton of uh, w uh, plastic, plastic waste in, in the stomach. Yeah, and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, that, Jesus, that was yesterday. Wet. I mean, it's just horrendous. That was yesterday. It? Yeah, washed out. Um, so we of... we need to take this a hell of a lot more seriously. Fire so I'm, this kind of I think this thing is really important. Um, but that's conservatism in a nutshell. So we I mean we've got a few to go through here. So we are going to race through them. But so we've got this nine point two billion pound spend. They're really going to push offshore wind and carbon capture and energy intensive. Uh, industries mm -hmm. um, and then they're gonna they're gonna put this half billion pounds into the sort of protect the seas and I guess they'll probably carry on with their transportation policy which has been banning diesel and petrol cars by 2013 and this, they uh, this want to do that by 2040 they want to they want to um, ban the sale of new petrol and diesel cars okay um, but not. this is all under I mean <coughs> undermine well not undermined sorry <laughs> that wrong word. <laughs> they're, but they they're all really their commitment to make us carbon neutral by 2050 is pretty strong like that's a, that's their marker in the sand and the the ideas they've come up with here don't really get them there mm. in my opinion um but anyway that's again that's just me so you want to talk about labor so yeah, they were just quickly. gonna fly over i mean we talked about it last yeah. last time but they're you know the new green deal um so we were very much involved in the green deal the first time uh and we also uh you know we, we spoke to the guys buying the Green Deal loan book and then, you know, with a view to make so this it is, more commercial prospects. This is where the, the investment is passed on to the, um, or, or the, or, sorry, the, the, the expected savings of the measure itself should pay, pay for... for pay the, for the measure over its lifespan. Um, it's a really, really clever principle. Uh, the, the issue is, um, number one, really high interest rates. Number two, do you want to put debt onto an electricity meter? Why mm. would someone buy a house that already has debt on it? You know, so you're not just having to take a mortgage, you're having to take on more debt. Uh, so that's an interesting one. And we discussed it, you know, if you want to listen to it, go well, to episode 28. They can work, I think, if the mechanisms are different. So if, you know, if it's completely reformed and they use the, you know, just low interest from the private sector, but not necessarily going on the electricity meter, going on to, you know, as a mortgage product or... Yeah, I, th I think that's, I th yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think... Um, I think the, the other thing is that the, the life savings of some measures, people assume if I put a new boiler into my house, it's going to make a huge difference, right? If I've got mm. a 15 year old boiler and I put a new one in my house, we're talking like two, 3% energy savings potentially. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's that becomes a real issue here because actually, despite the fact the boiler has a sort of useful lifespan of 10 to 15 years now, um, because you know they've clocked on to the fact they want to sell boilers every ten to fifteen years, so they're not going to last much longer than that. Yeah. Um, but you don't get these massive efficiency gains, so mm -hmm. you can't free up that much funding by this mechanism. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of one of the bigger issues that you know it works perfectly if it's a cheap measure that gives a really high reward, i.e., loft insulation. If you have zero loft insulation, you install three hundred mil. The energy savings are going to be substantial. Yeah. Um, but if I had even, you know, if I have 100 mil in loft insulation and I install another 200 mil, the cost of it is not going to pay for it. Mm. You know, the savings aren't going to pay for that. So it's it's a tough one. If they get it right and they position it correctly, it might work. Um, as as a sort of byproduct of this, the the Labour Party are pledging this one million green jobs in the energy sector. Um, which again, you know, there's a lot of install. It's a tricky companies. one to measure. No. Yeah, it is. I think, and the reason for me that it's it's tricky. Obviously, we saw a huge number of companies spring up when the Green Deal first launched. But a lot of companies now that do building works will put in new windows, or they will have attached to them 
uh, heating engineer because you have to be gas safe. So they will have someone who will install a new boiler. Mm -hmm. So despite the fact they might try and get, you know, 10 million new boilers installed, the issue is that we already have the people that can install them already doing it. So I don't know where the new jobs would come from necessarily. But also take a long time. So if, if we are having to train people up, it'll take a long time for people to be upskilled to do the measure installment to a competent enough level. Yeah, I mean, I, I met a chap yesterday and he was, um, he so he went to college and did a plumbing course and mm -hmm. he did two years of this plumbing course and decided he didn't really like it, didn't want to become a plumber anymore. Mm -hmm. That's two years and he's decided. Yeah. You know, it's, these, it's not like they can become a plumber overnight, which is a good thing because they need to know what they're doing. But it's, um, you know, if you've got a five year term of parliament, um, and we've seen how tricky it is, so for example, external wall insulation, to do that in a competent way. Yeah. Quite tricky. 100%. 100%. It's a, it's a tough one. Um, the Moving on, sorry, because we've got lots to get through. Yeah, I was just going to just gonna say then um, the the vehicle scrappage scheme. So that's that was take, that's taken from their, um, they did quite a popular one when Gordon Brown was um, Prime Minister mm -hmm. back in the previous decade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you remember it was like four and a half thousand pounds? Yeah. And then that created a bit of a vehicle boom. I think it's not a bad idea, but it just depends on what, you know, how much. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the, the issue is if I, I'm finding issues here, not solutions. So I apologize. But if you, you know, if, if you say, right, here's 5K for an electric car, the but incremental the cost of getting an electric car is 5K. Mm. You know, if I go and buy a, I don't, God knows, if I go and buy a Polo, for example, or I buy an electric polo, the electric polo tends to be the grant plus some more expensive, if that makes sense. So, a tricky one. Tricky I think it'd be good, so if, if either of the parties, they, they offered a scrapping scheme, but for vehicles that are finished or manufactured in the UK. Yeah. How good would that be? No, it would be a good idea. That would have encourage it. My idea, just saying. They should talk to you. They should, yeah. Um, and then the phone's there, just you know. They're talking about obviously this five point six billion pounds um, towards the flood defences, uh, which seems relatively sensible. Mm -hmm. um, when when you see you know the floods we had recently uh, in the Midlands, the the just the impact, the catastrophic impact flooding causes. Yes. And you know the insurance companies that have sort of flooding clauses in them, i.e., if you flood, your insurance is void. It's um, it's very tri tricky to watch those kind of TV reports, isn't it? I, I don't know. You feel incredibly sorry for these people. Who's, yes. Everything they own is is kind of essentially floating down the river. Okay, so that's Labour onto the onto the Lib Dems. So we talked. You talked a little bit about the fifty four billion, um, which would you know to to insulate, for example, just an element. Can, can we do just a really quick on Labour? Go. On. Um, Diane Abbott. Uh, oh yes, who is famous yes. for getting her numbers right. Yes, ish. Yes, um, announced that by two thousand forty they want to plant two billion trees, uh, which works out eleven thousand trees per hour. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, as sort of we we ran some quick numbers before this, that's a lot of trees. It maybe, would be awesome. Say what, maybe, don't get me wrong. It would be amazing. You know what? But maybe I, if we brought national service back and kind of mobilised about two billion people. You know, yeah, and any then that would be possible. Yeah, and and then your million green jobs. If your green job is counted as planting trees, yes, then yeah, and some. Um. Anyway, right. So that's that. Uh. Sorry, Lib Dems. So, uh. So eighty percent. So this the big thing that stood out for me. They want eighty percent of renewable power. Um. By twenty thirty. So we've talked. You know, we've ten years. We have an energy saving forum where we're all about um, renewables, all that sort of thing. This is this is what we do for a living. Mm. I just think if you want to power the country by 80% renewables, unless you're including nuclear in renewables, which I'm assuming you're not, I don't know how it works because of intermittency. I don't know. Maybe we need to ask Ed Davey. Um, or, or Joe. Miss Winston. Miss Winston, yeah. Um, so uh, I... It's a lovely aspirational target. It's going to be very difficult on the grid. Actually. I'd, I'd say so. I'd say I think so. That's the biggest thing. So you could probably get the capacity up, and the grid wouldn't be able to cope with. Yeah. That's what you've just said. So. Um, they they're pledging to plant at least uh, to plant at least sixty million trees per year. So not quite you, as ambitious as the old. Do you uh, know it's a tree theme with all the parties? I don't listen. I I don't have a problem with it. 
So I would you, saw would you join in? Would you join in if there's luxury? luxury? Yeah. Yeah, luxuries. Yeah. I th so they're talking about uh, making a deciduous trees. North to mm -hmm. south uh, national park that has trees right the way down, the base of the centre of our country. Listen, I think it's, it's cool. Novel, yeah. I think it's a really good idea. I do, yeah, I'm only much for seeing trees. Didn't they have something different. similar in the 70s, Harry? Fact checking here. Yeah. Um, wasn't there like a national campaign to plant an, an, an orchard or you know plant an apple tree in your back garden? I have no idea. I mean that's mid seventies, before my time. But yeah, yeah it just stands out. At school. That's the kind of thing you'd learn there. No one knows that kind of thing, and I'm glad you. If just someone knows, if someone, there, if someone knows nice. what the scheme was and whether they whether they were actually involved, I'd love to hear in the comments. Um, so the, the, moving on from that, Lib Dems are also, they want to ensure that all new cars are electric by 2030. Mm -hmm. uh, just That's a hell of a lot of batteries, James. It is. A big draw on the lithium yes. reserves. Yes. Um, and uh, again, the, so the big thing uh, is the insulate all the homes by 2030. And now we worked, as I said, we worked out the cost briefly in sort of back of a fan packet. And it was fifty-four billion pounds just for the EWI side of that. So that is a huge amount. Now, you know, that doesn't include cavity, lofts, all this sort of thing. So you might be looking at sort of seventy, eighty billion pounds here, mm -hmm. which is serious cash. And on top of the fourteen billion I'm just going into Mr. Geeman was on on the radio show, um, for their childcare policy. It's gonna be a hell of a lot of commitments there, so yeah, I think when the Institute of Fiscal Studies looked at it, yeah, it's just they looked at the numbers and they just thought, hmm, just they weren't quite sure where the money would come from. But anyway, very ambitious, I'd say. Yeah, probably one of the most ambitious ones at, of, all, of all the main parties. Agreed, agreed. And then they're um, so they're looking to um, target obviously waste recycling. So they want seventy percent of all waste recycled, which mm -hmm. I think is very admirable. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. Uh, and then finally, they're they're looking at putting four point five billion into bus routes. Now, an interesting thing I saw here was that when um, it was like an infographic, and I've never really liked infographics, but it was a picture of a, a New York road, and it was just full of taxis and cars essentially. And they worked it out, so they basically said in this picture, you've got you know one hundred and fifty people or something, mm -hmm. yeah, but there were loads of cars, cars everywhere, obviously, yeah, and there's yeah. like an average of one point two people per car. I, I, in some cars, there's two, and most cars there's one person. They then did the same thing, and they just showed two buses, and they said the same number of people in all these cars could fit in these two buses, and it was quite a striking thing to see because you're like, wow, actually, if we did get the bus network right, and I think in London, you know the. The, um, the cycle highways, which again is great because more and more people are cycling, but it's completely clogged up the city. I and think they're very dangerous as well. Yeah, I think for the think, cyclists and for, yeah, for the drivers. I think if, if they could, start, if you could build a city from scratch and you oh, could yeah. nail bus routes, yeah. it would be unbelievable. But trying to retrofit them and make it work mm -hmm. so actually the town keeps moving. You know, my commute is from north of the river Thames down to where we are here. I mean, it can take so long to get to work because you've got all these pinch points trying to cross the river mm -hmm. uh, and so buses potentially would be a fantastic way to take cars off the road um if if it was done properly so that's lib dems okay um, S, &P. S &P, so S &P focusing a little bit on scotland here for a second so I just say although they have come out with uh measures that they like to see across the uk the S P. so um so net, net zero by 2045, so five years more. Well, they're naming it, aren't they? In terms of renewables, mm -hmm. yeah, Scotland, I'm not going to say the SMP necessarily, but Scotland are doing fantastically well in moving towards um, you know, renewables, mm -hmm. essentially, and powering the country by renewables. They have a lot of hydroelectric. But it's, yeah, um, because the topography of the country allows them, allows them mm -hmm. to be an off offshore wind, I suppose. And, yeah. Um, and then, and, if, the, and they, they're looking, you know, they were looking at tidal um, power in near the Shetlands. That's Harry's for tidal lagoons. Harry's favourite. That's it. That's <laughs> in one. But yes. Um, so that's that's one of their big things. And I think actually they really could get there. Mm -hmm. um, go on, more. What? Uh, so these are, these are petrol cars out by twenty thirty two. So again, this is becoming a sort of common theme now. Yeah. But twenty thirty two is still a couple of years after the Greens and the Lib Dems. You want twenty thirty? We haven't got to the Greens yet. Yeah, well, we've got past lived down to that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, true. Uh, so, <coughs> absolutely. Um, they would like a green and green new deal. So, I, 
again this i don't know if that's similar to labor's green new deal mm -hmm. i assume it is because they tend to have policies in common green energy deal to ensure renewable firms can plan for so it's more about the commercial sector mm. um and then the north sea oil they're, they're looking at ring fencing the money from the north sea oil uh and using that to for so basis. let's invest in various yeah I, measures. I mean unfortunately those tax receipts have gone right down but you know we shall we shall see what happens in the future um so i think the smp's one is ambitious but i think mm -hmm. it's probably the one that they're most likely to get to mm -hmm. is that fair yes but what if um Sturgeon gets her way and they have another referendum and they become independent yeah then where does that leave them in terms of do they have the money to do this do they have the infrastructure or oh, they've, they've got all that black gold in the north sea and they've also got most of the wind farms so <laughs> yeah i I, I don't, probably a bit too much of a area. I, again, I, I think that's moving off the energy policy more <laughs> onto more onto other bits and pieces that we probably shouldn't touch on here. Um, anything else about the SMP? Sorry, I just it, it was called plant a tree in seventy three. <laughs> Good man. God, do you have some random plant knowledge. a tree in seventy three? So if anyone uh, knows that, so we're so we're touch. off the SMP onto the Brexit party. So the Brexit party. If you've seen uh, Nigel. Uh, come out and basically say, well, yes, in an ideal world, everyone should drive an electric car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, mm. But I don't. I drive around, and you know, I smoke like a chimney and all this sort of stuff. He's he's not the kind of I don't know the flag bearer. No, I guess. But he does ride on a he does ride on a double decker bus though. So you have got to give it to him in terms of his <laughs> carbon footprint campaigning around the country. Um, but they're but they I mean they've gone. So in their manifesto, they don't really separate it out into a sort of environment policy. I, I think this tree, tree planting policy. thing was something that he came out with and everyone else kind of... No, just... he came out in 73, mate. You've just told us. No. Planting a tree in 73. Talking about the Brexit party. <laughs> <laughs> um, but their other thing uh, is we, we can't export any waste, mm -hmm. um, which I think, again... I think is admirable. I think it's a lot of the parties have this, you know, they're all targeting how we can deal with waste. And if you if you do, you know, sit on Google and you have a spare half an hour, just to have a look at what we do with our waste at the moment, it is absolutely unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So I think if we took care of, of what we produce, that would be a very sensible idea. But that's about it. I think their, their policy is pretty thin on the ground, I'd say. I think they're interested in more in other things, potentially Brexit. I think it's interesting that they um, that they want to do all this recycling in, in the UK because I mean, with the way that recycling works and how we we basically sell um, recycling is a is an industry mm -hmm. um, that's designed to make money, and you know with with trade links, you know, changing with Brexit, it may be a case of necessity rather than yeah uh, of economic necessity rather than actually wanting to keep it in house for any. Ecological reasons. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think that's a very fair point. I, um, it will be interesting to see. I mean, I don't think there's a chance that much of this is going to be put into practice, mm. to be honest. Mm. But uh, right, Green Party. So this is the big one. So these are the, they have gone wow. big. So headline. They want to Get borrow a hundred billion pounds each year of the government. Uh, so, sorry, for the next decade. Yeah, so we're talking. So, so it's what? Well, it's, it's half a. It's one trillion. Half a trillion it's one per trillion. parliament, and then one trillion. Yes, one over trillion decade, over, yeah. over the decade yeah. um, to become net zero economy by 2030, mm -hmm. by the 30s. I. Um, so we're weird. Not many people know this, but we've both been accountancy. Uh, so I, I would worry about that level of debt. Yes. Um, but that's moving off the environmental side. If you could do it, it was incredibly cheap finance, mm -hmm. then then why not? So um, again, so what they talked about the car themes to 2030 again, which I think is the same as uh, Labour's, no, it's the same as Lib Dems. Dems. Yeah, so they, they, they... They want to insulate every home by 2030, mm -hmm. yeah, which is the same as um, Lib Dems again, or yes, same as Lib Dems. Um, and again, one thing the Lib Dems and the Green Party have in common is they want to actually, and we didn't mention it with the Lib Dems, but they want to attach this levy on people who fly frequently 
uh, and try and claw back a bit of cash there. Mm. I don't think it's going to claw back the hundred billion pounds a year they're looking for, but it might give yeah, that's come from somewhere else. a couple of billion pounds. You know that Green Party want to scrap your favourite project, don't you? HSC? Yeah. I, that's why I've always thought well, That's what the Brexit Party want to do as well. Everyone, everyone sensible wants to scrap HSC. <laughs> yeah. the biggest yeah, the best in local rail. I think, yeah, that's that's one thing we're talking about. Now, All the parties. Elon Musk has that marble run thing mm. where the marble pings at like a thousand miles an hour. That's what we need to be investing in. Imagine getting, them, like, yeah, imagine getting a little marble from London to Birmingham that takes like four minutes. Yeah, that sounds cheap. Let's do that. Well, it's cheaper than... So how much is it per so mile? So people riding it hamster-esque. <laughs> how much is it for HS2 <laughs> per mile? You, know, you just imagine that. Sorry, what? HS2 per mile? Well, no, they said it was going to cost around 80 billion, isn't it? I heard it was over 100 billion now. But that's, what they but that's, not, going to come that's not phase... You know, the first phase is to just to do all the other. Oh my god, it's a waste of money. Anyway, but, but anyway. I think all the parties were talking about um, investing more in, uh, in in local rail services and, and potentially, you know, upgrading lines and capacities on on some, you know, regional and. and um... But the but the green sorry, just got nipping back to this now because we're getting on with time. But the Green Party's environmental mandate, as as you'd expect, is the green is green they and want, the most ambitious of all the parties. They want net zero by 2030, I think, don't they? Yeah. That's, oof. That's ambitious. Yes. I think they want potentially 100% renewable as well, don't they? You would have thought. Yeah, you would, because they do not like nuclear. No. But again, where is my base load power coming mm. from? That's that's my issue. Battery storage? Turn UK into one big battery, James? A lot of lithium, isn't it? There's a lot of rare earth metals yes. being mined at great expense. Um, the other thing about the Green Party uh, that they have discussed that no other party has mm. is um, they proposed a tax on meat and dairy products. Oh, <laughs> your face maybe, is really maybe, maybe I've gone off. Today, maybe, maybe I've gone off. I was going to have a meat pizza tonight. <laughs> um, maybe the Green Party is not so sure about. I listen. It's incredibly ambitious. Uh, again, much like the Brexit party, I don't think we're going to be seeing a huge amount of what they what they do implemented. Um, but I think good on them, yeah. good on them, and I'm, I know for a fact that that is going to young people are going to buy into that. Yeah. You know, Extinction Rebellion type folk are going to lap that up, and why not? Uh, last one. Do you want to do it in a Welsh accent? <laughs> Go on. No, 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 because then, because then, all, all my homelanders will shout at me. Why? Come on. No. <laughs> but anyway, I'll say. Because you guys have got to talk about this anyway. Black Cymru. I've just got to judge Black you silently and Welshly. Um, Black Cymru, yeah. So no, but they, but they're one of their things is very close to your heart, isn't it? Oh, Swansea Tiger Lagoon, my there fave. There we go. So there we go. Feel free to go back and listen to the so episode. Black Cymru, like. um, very much of a Welsh focus on their. Have uh, you seen any of the debates? No. The fella who um, who represents Plaid Cymru, and I don't know his name, sounds, and I, this is going to sound really obvious because I know Tom Jones as well, <laughs> but it sounds just like Tom Jones. It's hilarious every time I watch it. So you got a good <laughs> singing voice. I, I haven't heard him sing yet. I haven't heard him sing, but he's... All yeah. Welsh people have beautiful singing voices. Mm. Do they? Know. Yeah, do it to karaoke. Okay, fine. Um, go on, sorry, Nick, interrupting. Uh, so again, so single-use plastics, they want to create a Nash, well, a Welsh kind of recycling mechanism to increase jobs and mm-hmm. you know, get it all recycled and all that good stuff. Tidal Lagoon, as we've talked about, and then a few offshore wind farms. Yeah. Off, I can't pronounce it. Yes. Anglesey, just call it that. Oh, and Anglesey, another yes. tidal barrage. Tidal barrage, yeah. So I love a tidal barrage. The one over the seven, terrific. That's, that's like my dream infrastructure project. Mm. Uh, but they're talking over the River Usk. See, I'm quite familiar with the River, with the river Usk. It's from where I'm from. But so I, I'm not quite sure where it would be wide enough. But anyway, presumably somewhere. Is that around Northshire? Yeah, yeah, around about there. Where's from? Monmouthshire. <laughs> I know where we are. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's so they're looking basically to throw in a lot of renewables in in Wales, which uh, so it's a very wash wash focus. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a lot about making making <clears throat> jobs in Wales as well. Yeah, I mean, as much as it's an environmental um, set of um, policies, it's also very much about addressing 
um, low levels of uh, employment in Wales. What um, is, this is a dangerous question, what is everyone's favourite environmental party policy? Well, what's, what's the one thing out of everything, that you, if you could pick it now, what would you pick? I like the trees. Yeah, but yes. I like your tree, tree for 73 or 83? Plant a tree. Plant a tree for 73. Plant a tree in 73. So, I, honestly, if you did that now, I'm, I'm in. I'll go and plant a tree. But I'll plant, plant a tree, tree in 2020. Three. Oh, no, I mean, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll go with the trees. Um, I, you've asked me the question. Yes. And I have to say, I quite like the um, Labour policy on flood defences. Okay. Very good that. Just how, because how can, I, I know this is going to sound a little bit stupid, but... How are you predicting with only five point how many? Five point four billion. Six. Five point six billion. How are you predicting where the floods are gonna occur? I know on floodplains, I, I get that. Yes. But I've driven through Reading, for example, and you drive through the ring road around Reading and it's all underwater. But that's just that's just sewage, isn't it? That's how they that's no, it's not, not just sewage, it's, it's just lots with, of rain. Yeah, like, it's how to do, do you with, predict where there is gonna be lots of rain and floods? With only five point six billion, but that's just you know, really needs to upgrade its sewage system so it can you know dissipate more water in a you know quicker time mm. period. Um, I, I don't think I'm listen. Sure. You know, I think it's going to be impossible to stop uh, flooding happening. You know, as a kind of blanket thing all across the country, just because mm. we don't know, as you said. Well, you know, but we can uh, certainly, you know, we can certainly put fill, measures in. Fill sandbags in anticipation. F f do measures that, that will you know mitigate the risk on some of the highest risk areas mm -hmm. so um, I quite like that um, what else has caught my eye um, the the offshore wind I think just carry on with that but uh, you know that's across the parties I'd say yeah uh, and it's and it's quite nice that across all of the political spectrum that there is as I said to you a seriousness about um, just you know environmental issues and, and energy and I think that's the big thing. I think that's the big thing we're seeing this this environment, sorry, not environmental, political cycle, mm -hmm. right? So in, uh, in this government cycle, we've we've never seen any ambition. I mean, the Greens, yes, but everyone else has, has kind of it's always been a very small part of the manifesto. But I'd say that the, the the elephant in the room is base load power, isn't it? Yes. No one, no one really has addressed that. No, no. But and that's I, because they're trying to get votes, and I think that the general public doesn't quite understand that the energy system needs that. They just want granted. They will do if they watch the. <laughs> they granted, but, but if you look at if you look at you know, so I'm going to throw six billion here, ten billion here. What's your favourite policy? Oh, just two seconds. If you're going to throw money everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Hinkley C is costing twenty six billion. Yeah. That's a decent whack of cash of, of these um, policies. You know, when I'm doing 5.6 billion for flood defences, for example, 26 million just to get one power station that's going to do like 5% of our base load power. Yeah. You know, when all these power stations, the existing ones, reach the end of their useful life at the end of the next decade and the 30s, we're going to have to replace them with something. And nowhere is any of that costed in any of these. My favourite policy. Um, is to do uh, with the improving the performance, the thermal performance of the envelopes of the okay. parties, because I think that fundamentally is is the biggest one. If you can get adequate levels of insulation, we have awesome buildings in this country. You know, you go to America and they have a building that's like ten years old and they knock it down and rebuild it. Here we've got houses that are hundreds, potentially thousand or eight thousand plus years old. They're still standing, they look beautiful. And we have the ways to insulate them now because obviously when they were built, they didn't really think about these things. Yeah. Um, and if we can get it right, you know, it, it makes an enormous difference and the thermal comfort improves massively for the occupants and all this sort of stuff. So that would be my one. It's a bit boring, but fine. I'm do you think we should that. be looking, uh, if we had to choose one, uh, do you think we should be looking at insulating homes first, like the Lib Dems are saying, or like the Tories are saying, going with schools, hospitals, public buildings? And so, so my view on this, so hospitals, the issue for me is that a new hospital is fit for purpose. If you are trying to retrofit this on an old mm. hospital, it doesn't work. So we were in hospital, I had the baby in the summer, 
the amount of stupid like long corridors and stuff that you have to walk down to get anywhere and this is basically it's because they're really old buildings and they've just got bigger and bigger and they've added new departments and they make no sense for me hospitals need to essentially be rebuilt and so all of the existing hospitals need to be turned into probably flats sold off that money freed up and they make built you know made for purpose hospitals Therefore, as a result of that, they'd be really well insulated, they'd operate really effectively, la la la, which means that my focus would be absolutely on homes. Because in hospitals and, and schools where you've got children and then obviously in hospitals, patients and stuff, it's also other things like um, not just heat retention, it's about it's, air quality, it's about... It's about amount of light. Mm. It's about having windows. You know, we, we were in our hospital room and it had sort of blurdy out crappy windows if, if they had really good double glazing windows but you weren't overlooking the, the this kind of new little hospital wing they just stuck on in the 70s then and you have to blur out the window for privacy you know they're not thinking about these things if you yeah. go near Swindon now and you look and you're on the M4 and you look kind of if you're traveling to Wales and you look um, north of the M4 they've built this massive purpose-built hospital and it is seriously it's an impressive structure it is enormous but you just know that everything is connected to the right places if someone was ill they can get them to where they need to be and that's I maybe want to discuss another time so, so why aren't the politicians talking about that why are they well the problem is the promises this for me the promises in this election cycle are so big yeah so from all the parties from all the parties so Boris has come out Mr. Johnson's come out and said he's going to build 40 new um, hospitals, right? So actually, in reality... It's eight hospitals, isn't it? I think it's six. And it's seed funding. And it's seed funding for Four. a whole load more, and then it's a couple of wings on more. Six new hospitals in five years, if they actually got built, is a decent number. Mm. Yeah? I, that is my feelings on it. But because I have to come out and make such a... I'm going to build a thousand hospitals... It yeah, just gets yeah, it's, it's, like it's, a, it's a hot potato thing, and it, it just becomes more and more ridiculous. And actually, if yeah. they just focused on it, but people gave the politicians a bit of a break. And I think they, I was watching the debate last night, and, I, and it was there was one final question, and know. this is my final thought today. Um, they were talking about uh, cross party cooperation, and there are things that are bigger than you know a silly politician making a stupid promise that he knows he's never going to keep mm -hmm. you know they things like this things like building new hospitals shouldn't just be thought of to try and gain votes in for one party over one term there needs to be cross-party cooperation that they come up with a proper plan for this stuff yeah because because obviously and that's on everything yeah and it's because don't forget um we don't just have parliament we have local councils that have a lot of devolved power and a lot of influence on in how they spend money. So to deliver it, you've got to be working you know, across all sectors of government, I, I, I think. And I, I think they need, to, they need to come up with a, a housing policy that is not just... About numbers. Um, I promise not I'm going to do 250,000 yeah. homes. Well, I'm going to do yeah. 251,000 homes because it's just utter crap. They need all the parties to sit there, like grown individuals they are, and come up with something sensible. That was the first time I was about to swear properly then. <laughs> um, but it's... Uh, so anyway, that's, that's my So the answer today. to your question, potentially, Harry, is if they spent it more on commercial businesses, that's where you'd probably see the gains. Because we see it, you know, from some of our uh, surveyor colleagues, you know, some of the stuff they're talking to us about, mm -hmm. commercial buildings and kind of poor EPC ratings and all that stuff. If you could address some of the lighting, the heating issues there um then yeah that would that would you know that would have a massive impact but maybe not in in the public sector as what you just said because you know you need to build things on fit for purpose fit for, uh, so just saying that so my my high school actually mm -hmm. was a ex-world war ii um military wing for, for for service people and it just wasn't so when i went to school it just wasn't fit for purpose here because it had all these long corridors but as you said it wasn't a very pleasant place to to study and now you go to it and it's been completely knocked down brand new and rebuilt yeah and i know that costs money yes but surely the money saved in the efficiency gains of doing stuff 
like that. And you know what? And, and, I mean, um, so that's what and maybe that, that's not the reason, but it went from good to excellent in the Ofsted report. And I don't know, obviously, you know, could say it's because of it's been rebuilt fit for purpose, but, you know, mm. maybe, maybe there is something there. So there we go. So that's our um, brief summary of yes. uh, the political landscape in terms of the environment as as is sort of going on right now, just before the election. And next um, we'll be back with better regular things that we talk about anyway. I, but I do, I find that hospital thing quite interesting. And I think we should probably look at, at mm. that kind of thing maybe in a bit more detail and we can have a yes. wider discussion on it and throw some Maybe an extra or two. Yeah, good. Anything else for anyone? No. Good stuff. Well, we will, um, we've been out for a few weeks, uh, but we're up and running again. Obviously, Christmas is very soon, so we'll have a brief break for that, um, but then we will crack on. So we'll have a few more podcasts for Christmas. Yeah, we should do. should do. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's it for this week. So thanks very much for listening or watching. Bye now. Bye-bye.